there was an event in of Renaissance art, which uh, turned out to be the biggest battle in recent in the Renaissance art history. Um, like Vasari redecorated the council, uh, the council hall of the Plaza, the Plaza Vecchio in Florence. Yeah, and he employed a old Leonardo da Vinci to paint a wall directly next to Michelangelo. Oh no! Yeah, this That's actually awesome. this actually happened, and so. Uh, it included so, so they had to paint two uh hang on i've got it written here what did they paint uh so leonardo was commissioned to paint a vast a vast wall painting of the battle of anghiari uh, a scene from the 15th century wars between Fl- florence and milan yeah and then in december uh, uh yeah sorry in december 1504 a younger Florentine was commissioned to paint the Battle of Castina, which took place between Florence and Pisa in the 14th century okay uh, so basically they were in competition with each other and so you've you had like a Leonardo da Vinci painting uh, f- like fresco right next to uh, the uh, the Michelangelo one and I'm not sure now that I'm reading this again how old was Michelangelo I was, I, I'm just about I'd love to... to know like if he was so hang on Vasari is explicit that this was a context uh, this was a contest he emphatically says that Michelangelo was commissioned in competition with Leonardo and with competition came paranoia hatred uh so i'm okay i'm actually wondering if i uh, have sort of misunderstood it i'm hoping i haven't that they were literally stood side by side oh they well could be um I, sometimes like this here you it's go, like here you go. the At fact the- that i didn't even know michelangelo and da vinci were alive at the same time is like Oosh. Um, okay, Da Vinci was born 1452. Michelangelo was born 1475. So, so ooh, it's a good yep. 25, 20, 23 years younger. Here you go. At the beginning of the 16th century, in the same room, side That's by amazing. side, on the same wall, Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, uh, Michelangelo Bonarotti were hired to paint vast battle scenes in direct competition with each other. I'm just like, now, in this day and age, like back then, they were sort of like Leonardo da Vinci was obviously very um very established Michelangelo mostly did statues but this was his first sort of it's up and coming big yeah he was up and coming he was I feel a good movie in here somewhere. <laughs> your dad could write it well, I'm amazed oh he could he could <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed this hasn't been done as a movie actually because like it is you can now now there's such well-known names and such well-known characters but back then it, it would have been like a battle of um I don't know. I'm just amazed this isn't a more known event in terms I, of... I, yeah. No one's heard of this. I love it when you have these historical figures and, you know, there's two people and you have no... You know, you've heard of both of them and both super famous in their own right. Like uh, the story we did a couple of stories ago with uh, Mark Twain and um, Nikola Tesla. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, it's a bit different because he just solved his constipation. <laughs> but like... <laughs> uh, Tesla... Gave him the runs. Right, yeah, yeah. Just... But I like it when you have these like... Inter- I've actually got... I don't know. I think it's next episode, actually. Oh, yeah, it'll definitely be next episode. With uh, Charlie Chaplin and his run-in with J.D. Salinger. Ooh, There's okay. these cool... I love it when these things cross over. There's his less friendly yeah. as we'll see Charlie Chapman a bit of a dick what I want to know next week. what I want to know is whose side would you have been on Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo who did you cheer for uh, I like da Vinci I like da Vinci da Vinci, da Vinci. I like da Vinci I, I, I mean apparently he was very very flamboyant he was, oh, yeah. yeah, he was. Uh, he was a very, very openly gay homosexual, which at that time was a was a pretty rare that. thing. Yeah, I mean, wow. I'm sure you do know that he made primitive sort of primitive designs for a helicopter. He did. I did know that flushing toilet. Yep. Uh, all those sorts of things. He was. He was an incredible inventor and inc- incredible artist. I went to a great ex 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 <laughs> exposition ex. Uh, Exhibition. Exhibition. Thank you. Um, here, there, were, there was a touring Da Vinci exhibition, and they had um, like taken a bunch of his drawings, and they had assembled the Ooh. various things from them. It was cool. They didn't work, but <laughs> that is, you know, yeah, well, no, he course, didn't create well, course, a flying course. machine. But it was cool to see. You know, he's on the right track. He was definitely close. Yeah, there's. I mean, it is. It is really interesting. I love seeing. Uh, I love seeing sort of. Um, what's the word uh sort of work artwork or, or pieces of drawing or writings from the olden days yeah. from i i went to where was i i was again it was in windsor castle actually uh they had for a while they had the works of shakespeare and the actual original wow. works of shakespeare there uh, like that they've got the uh, property of the castle i love this I, lo- I love old maps as well oh me too got a lot this of is old my map, you know, oh, this is my maps. thing if i if i had the <laughs> disposable income that's what i collect like that's my collectible my oh, yeah. collector's thing i would collect old sea fairing maps and things like that oh that's cool i love that i have an old uncharted things and... 19th century map of prague up Ooh. in my bathroom at home which is how does it compare is it pretty much the same 
Uh, well, the part of town we're in now, yeah, it's pretty much the same. Like, and then, but obviously, it's smaller. Mm. Um, and then, actually, I don't know about this building. This probably wasn't here. This building's, uh, I guess, hundred years old. Not, and that maps like one hundred and twenty. Mm. My apartment building's on there, which was cool. And then that uh, is cool. Yeah, but it's much closer to the edge of town now. It would be regarded as in the center of town, and now it's that was like, oh yeah, it's near the city wall. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. The city wall wasn't in use back then. Just but. quickly jumping back to art. Yeah. There's, Sorry, I've got a, no. I've got a quick fact. A quick fact Ooh. to throw in. So Van, Gl- Van Gogh's olive trees. Do, do you know the art piece? No. All right, it's one of his very famous art pieces. You uh, the bring olive it up? trees. Yeah, I can bring it up. I can bring it up. Hang on. Here we go. Uh, it's definitely not copyrighted anymore. Van so. Gogh, uh, <laughs> olive. Trees. I might recognize it. That's live trees. Hang on. All live alive. Just uh, by the way, all the Americans are going to be like, who's Van Gogh? <laughs> Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Uh, this one here. So here all the Americans ever go at me for pronouncing Nike, Nike. Oh, you're British. Back me up. How do we say Nike? Nike. Bri- Nike. 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 Yeah, it's Nike. And, and Adidas. Oh, how else do you say that? They say Adidas. Oh. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Adidas. Americans say Adidas. Nike. But it is Nike, you know. Because it was named after the temple of Nike. I do know that. And so we get it wrong, but I can't say Nike because then everyone in the UK would be like, stop pandering to Americans. <laughs> and the same Porsche. Porsche is Porsche. Oh, is that right? Yeah, Porsche is Is that the correct pronunciation? It's German. So it's Porsche. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Um, so just a nice little quick fact. I don't know this Van Gogh. Oh, so this is Van okay. Gogh. <laughs> this Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Uh, so Dude, great Van Gogh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, rad, brah. The olive trees. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm, I'm going to calm you down now. <laughs> calm down. Sorry. Uh, no, so, so carried away. Olive trees by Vincent van Gogh um, <laughs> contains a, uh, a dead grasshopper embedded in the paint. Oh. Uh, so a real... Is this for the color? Live dead grass... No, no. It's not like ground up. It's just it's in there, like placed in there and painted in. Oh. So just... That's yeah. awesome. Nice little quick fact. What? There you go. That's cool. I thought it must be something to do with the colors. I, I did a little documentary uh, about the color of different paints. And back in the day, like when uh, the Dutch masters were doing their, uh, you know, hyper realistic paintings, they needed different colors. And one of their reds they got from like ground up beetles from some Spanish island somewhere. This They're is Cochineal actually beetles. when I was in, I, w- I went to Peru and in Cusco. Of course, of course you did. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. In, in Cusco. <laughs> Stop that. In Cusco, there's a, a place you can go called um, Sexy Huaman. Sexy Huaman. Sexy Huaman. Okay. And How's that, that spelled? Uh, no idea. It's, it's all spelled, <laughs> it's all spelled in, 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 in Inca. Oh. But um, uh, not Inca, Maya, Maya, Inca. I don't know. I'm not sure. Dude, I can't I'm not going to be able to correct you. Yeah. And uh, basically, they, they demonstrate how they how they color the... Um, uh, what's the what's the llama? What's the little llama called? The uh, alpaca, the alpaca, <laughs> alpaca fur. How would I know this? Well, oh, come on! It, like, it, what's the little llama called from Peru? <laughs> alpaca. I've heard of um, alpaca. So there's there's the alpaca. Is it the alpaca? I think it is alpaca. Dude, I don't know. All right. So anyway, not... <laughs> anyway, anyway, alpaca. And the the first time you shave an alpaca's fur, it's really, really, really soft, mega soft. Okay. And it's very, very expensive, and there's a thing where they show you if you squash bugs in with a particular sort of plant it, yeah. it that's how they get all the colors so different bugs have different colors that they make so some of them are red some of them are blue purple wait what's that got to do with the fur uh the, it colors it that's how they paint they paint it they color it that way ah wait they so they've got the fur of the alpaca and then they want to make and it like, like red or something exactly ah, okay so they they use they use the bugs which is exactly what you're saying but my understanding of this particular situation with the olive trees of Van Gogh is <laughs> that it's embedded in. It's like been placed in. So, so yeah. I mean, that's just a quick fact. I'm afraid I've, I don't have more for you than that. No, that's enough. I mean, what else do you want? I don't need the grasshopper's life history. <laughs>